Hey, what is up? It is Sunday, July 3rd, 2022, and welcome to Coding with Chef. Um, yeah, or Chef the Algo Guy. Whatever, I still get those names mixed up time to time. Yeah, so today I'm here I'm bringing you another pro program, another Leak Code problem this uh, early Sunday morning. And yeah, it's about to be 4th of July. Tomorrow's going to be fireworks uh, going abound. There have been fireworks all day. Anyway, yesterday and the day before. And yeah, so you've all seen that around. And I know you don't care about that as much as you care about the actual algorithm. So yeah, if you like my videos, like, subscribe, comment. And uh, just, uh, yeah, it helps me grow the channel and do all that stuff that other YouTubers say that like, subscribing, and comment does for them. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's get to the problem. Uh, this is 561. It's a relatively early Eatly code problem called array partition one. It's an easy problem. I actually really like this problem, and I'll go into why. Um, but let's, let's read the statement. The statement says, given an integer array nums of two n integers, group these integers into n pairs, uh, a1, b1, a2, b2, a, n, b, n, such that the sum of min a, i, b, i for all i is maximized, return the maximized sum. Okay, and if you look at the example, you get, you're given an array of integers, 1, 4, 3, 2, and uh, the output, the maximum sum is 4, and uh, explaining here is the different uh, pairings of integers or some possible pairings or all possible pairings ignoring all ordering we have 1 and 4 2 and 3 equals min 1 and 4 which is 1 plus min 2 and 3 equals 2 that's sum equals 3 uh, min 1 and 3 min 2 and 4 goes to min 1 and 3 plus min 2 and 4 so that sum is equal to 3 min 1 and 2 uh, 3 and 4 equals min 1 2 min 3 4 is 1 plus 3 equals 4 so min of 3 and 4 is 3 min of 1 and 2 is 1 and those two sum together is 4 so the maximum possible sum is 4 hopefully you can understand that and then here's a larger example where the optimal pairings are given uh, 2 1 2 5 6 6 okay so um, just let's get uh, straight away uh, done with the brute force solution uh, the brute force solution of this is like if you you know, obviously, if you have a, like hundreds or thousands of integers, you can take every possible pairing and find the min pair of all those integers, sum them together, and uh, th those min pairings sum together. You can try summing up all different, all the different combinations of pairings, and without thinking about it too much, that would not only be code-wise annoying and complex, but it would also be time complexity. Uh, the time complexity would be exponential because you're looking at every possible pair, right? Um, exponential with some factors, right? Um, so, yeah, that is not a tractable solution for a problem that's so simple. And so just some of this involves just looking at this problem and just thinking about, you know, how you can get the maximized sum. And so how can you get the maximum sum? Well, I mean, straightforwardly, like, look at look at what the... You know, without going into the the final observation right away, you want to, to maximize the sum. You want to min. You want to maximize the minimums that can be summed together, right? So in this case, one, four, two, three. You're not maximizing the minimums, right? Because you have one and four, who is one, and two and three equals four, uh, two, three, right? Um, so if you were to maximize minimums how could you how could you do this well that just means that since they're uh being taken in pairs the numbers are being taken in pairs um let's see how do you do that and this is just kind of giving away the answer but that's basically sorting the solution right okay so and obviously here you'll have the maximum this the maximum of minimum from maximum sum of minimums because this is the m maximum minimum possible when I've aligned these two elements next to each other and this is the maximum minimum aligned for this pair and so in this case 6, 2, 5, 6 so you have 1, 2, 2, 5, 6, 6 and so here's the maximum <coughs> minimums here that's uh, 1 you have the maximum of minimums here is 2 maximum minimums here is 6 and therefore you sum those together and you get 9 okay so 
uh, that's just a matter of like looking at that and getting that intuition. So basically what you could do is int um, min sum equals zero, nums equals, um, erase. <coughs> you don't have to erase that sort, nums int uh, equals zero. I less than nums dot length i plus equals two and so, so I'm just I've done what I said I've um, I've sorted the thing nums and I am just summing the JSON pair return min sum okay. Um, uh, oh, let's call it max sum. Max. 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 Or max min sum, however you want to call it. Okay, and so if you solve this problem, okay, you see, okay, that's fine. But um, there are faster ways to solve this problem, okay? So one thing, sorting, okay, sorting is the optimal strategy here, but... How else can we do this? Well, we can try something slightly different by, let's say we do have to still sort this thing, right? Uh, when you have integers, right? When you have integers, y you know, when you're using the built-in sorting algorithm, there's optimizations in the language, but uh, the baseline sorting, according to computer science, fastest sorting method, uh, runs, which is quick sort, can run you in the range of, uh, you know, O of n log n, right? All the way up to n squared for worst case, etc. And then randomized quick sort will bring you to n squared. Merge sort will have uh, average complexity of n squared. I mean, sorry, n log n. But the thing is, you can actually do better than that when you have integers. Why? Because integers uh, can act as indices into arrays. And so you have the theory of counting sort, right? So again, barring optimizations that Java does, we're going to try to do a counting sort, okay? So I'm gonna write a counting sort function. And the way that counting sort works, or count sort, or bucket sort, etc., is that, uh, so basically what I'm gonna be doing is, and you should bone up on this if you haven't seen this, but, if I have a number one, 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 two, two, like three, two, one, five, negative one, even because negatives are important in this case, what I could do, how do I sort these? Well, I can either you know do a traditional sorting algorithm or I can create a frequency map, right? And so I can create something that, like, essentially does something where I, like, what's the count of negative ones? There's one. What's the count of one? There's two. What's the count of two? There is two. What's the count of three? There's zero. What's the count of four? There's one. And what's the count of six? It's one. And yeah, and so basically, you you restore your array to negative one, two, two, negative one, sorry, one, one, two, two, four, six. Okay, and because what I did, all I did, because when I go through this frequency array, I count these elements in order. Okay. Um, uh, so that basically allows me to, since I'm going through the frequencies in order, I once I get the counts, I can look how many times in order these frequencies were counted, and I can add these, I can re-add these to the, or replace these in the original array from the count array, because I see there was one negative one, and remember we're starting at negative one and going to six in order in the frequency array, right, because that's just how you can easily create frequencies, right? And so negative one happens once, one happens twice, 
from the frequency we count, counted, so we add one twice. Two happens twice from the frequency we counted, two and two. So we add two twice, and four happens once, and six happens once. So this is kind of like, you know, basic computer science, but it's a little bit ingenious in the sense that you can actually get much faster than standard sorting by doing this. So what I'm going to do is uh, integer max value so 4 and i equals 0 so what I'm doing here I'm getting the minimum and maximum of this array why do I need that um, because I have negative numbers and I can't index into I can't do count of negative 2 right at least in Java here so what I would have to do is I have to essentially shift up right count count of negative 2 negative 2 to like 9, let's say, to 9, to 7, equals count of 0 to 9, and then minus 2, right? You see, so I'm just indexing using uh, zero-based indexes, and then I'm subtracting the minimum. And by doing that, I can shift all my numbers and still c account for negative numbers. So it's kind of that's kind of ingenious too. As I said, I like this number. I like this problem. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to construct my frequency array. Nums that length plus plus max equals max max nums of i. So I'm just getting the max in Python. You can do this actually easily with one line, but the time complexity, remember, is still it's hidden under that function. So if you were whenever you're just using built-in functions, you always have to count for actual time complexity. Um, so now, uh, and remember, this only holds for, holds for negative numbers. So what I'm going to do here is a little trick that it's going to say if the min is greater than 0, min equals 0. This way I don't have to worry about doing shifting and whatnot for numbers that are where minimums are, um, you know, minimums are not being negative needs to index into the array. It's just uh, it's just an optimization that helps make the code easier. Um, okay, and max minus min, and now this is with a count. See this range here is max minus min. So if I have nine, if I have seven, seven and negative two. Uh, 7 minus negative 2 equals 9, so that's what this, so we need a total of 9 elements, right, to count for negative numbers. Now this here, like if uh, my minimum is positive, this is a slight unoptimization in that case, but like a de-optimization, but in this case, it, since it's making the code easier, I want to deal with, I want to do that for now, so basically, yeah, nums that length, i plus plus, now, we're now that we've ca calculated our minimums and maximums, we're now using those uh, to get the values of our um, frequencies, right? And now that's uh, so now I'm just getting the total. I'm getting this here, right? Shifted obviously by the minimum, right? That's what I said I was doing in the bidding. Now I'm reconstructing the sorted array. Int i equals zero. I less than count length. Now this is the part where you'd have to pay attention to, if um, because reconstructing the sorted array, uh, I'm using um, a prim primitives here, Java primitives. So what I have to do is it's not a hash map where if a key doesn't exist, I can check for whether the key exists or not. I have to account for all the indices between the uh, range min to max, right? shifted range. So if only if the count is greater than zero do I want to re-add it to the original array. I have this index here because there is a this is the index of the array I'm reconstructing, right? Because if I have, for example, two twos here, I have to add one two and add another two. If I had another two here, or if I had five twos, I have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, shift and I have to add uh, or one, two, three, four, five and I have to add those five twos and I have to shift my index of the original array accordingly to add those five twos um, 
So I so okay, and here's the coup de bras. Nums index equals i plus min. Okay, index plus plus. And so basically, again, the index of the original array gets shifted by one. And we doing this inner loop here. Don't worry about the inner loop taking extra, making it n squared or anything. The inner loop just shifts the index along in the count uh, appropriately, right? So you know this count goes. You know, it, counts the number of duplicates that are there for a specific count and shifts the array up. Remember, we're only going all the way up to the count length, okay? So don't worry about um, extra time here, right? And then we return nums. No. Okay, so let's run this here. Hopefully you understand what's going on here. Um, I equals zero. 23. What's wrong with line 23? Oh. And again, line 23, I. Okay, four. And there you go. Much, much better. All right. So, what's the time complexity of this, right? We're not looking at O n log n. We're actually looking up O of n plus k. Why plus k? Because um, we look at the time that it takes to get the original nums, the original, we have to go through each of these ones, and then k, we have to, k is the frequency, the range. So if we have 10,000, k is going to be plus 10,000, okay, if, if that's the highest number in the array, right? And actually, it would be two times k if you're, in certain cases, if you're taking the range of the entire uh, possible problem space, but Let's say we're not doing that well, now. We're just taking the size of the maximum, okay? And again, if this maximum is very high, right? That's why they say that um, uh, this is good for smaller integers because if the maximum is very high, then that sh at some point will be greater than O n log n, and or com at least competitive with that. So, you know. Um, that's why you can't, the integers have to be bounded and also by the, you know, size of the integers in the system. Okay, and the space is O of n plus k as well, and I'd say it's really O of, o of k if I'm reusing my array because I'm just creating an additional uh, frequency array, so if it's 10,000, count 10,000, I'm using, and for negatives, I'm using 2 times 10,000, right? So again, space is also dependent on the range, okay? so. Yeah, that's it for this problem. I hope you enjoy this lesson in computer science. <laughs> that's basically what this was in basic skull count sort. And yeah, if you like my video, like, subscribe, comment, and let me know how I'm doing. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you around.